divide 27 by 3 is not a statement because we cannot determine the sentence is true or false. This is a statement, although the sentence is false, so it is a false statement. Antecedent mean this part. Consequence mean this part. Antecedent is the sentence in between if and then, and consequence is the sentence after then. Some multiples of fives are even numbers. All hexagons have six sides. This statement is false, and this statement is true. False, true, false, true, false or true. False or true? The answer is true. P or Q always true, except both of them are false. P and Q always false, unless both of them are true. 47 is not a perfect square, so the answer is false, because the square root of 47 is not an integer. Eighteen divided by nine is two. Twenty-seven divided by nine is three. For two and three, there is no common factor, so the highest common factor for eighteen and twenty-seven is nine. So the answer is true. Thirty is a multiple of five and seven is false because thirty cannot be divided by seven. This statement is true. Why? Because five power three is one hundred twenty-five. Although this one is false for all statement, one of them is true. Will get true for all statement. Only both of them are false. Will get false. The argument is valid if the argument is follow one of the three form. This is P. This is Q. And so this one is not Q. And this one is not P. Then we check this table to check if they follow one of the three form. And we find that it follow the form 3. P, Q, not Q, not P. P, Q, not Q, not P. During examination, the table is not given, so you must memorize these tables. So the form of the argument is form 3. So the argument is valid. If all the premises and conclusions are true, then the argument is sound. So any premise or conclusion is false, the argument will become not sound. And we found that Premise 1, Premise 2, and Conclusion all are true, so the argument is sound. Proof value means check the sentence is true or false. The statement is false, or if-then statement, the statement only false when the first part is true and the second part is false. And for this question, this part is true and this part is false. So the result is false. So I say again, for if then statement, the result always true. Unless first part is true, second part is false. True, false, false. Other condition, true. 
The first part is P. The second part is Q. Control positive. Follow this format. So this statement is true and this statement is false or if then statement true false you'll get false I say again for if then statement the statement always true unless true false will get false other condition will always get true In number theories, a perfect number is a positive integer that is equal to the sum of its positive divisors, excluding the number itself. For instance, 6 has divisor 1, 2, and 3, excluding itself. It means 6 can be divided by 1, 2, and 3. 6 also can be divided by 6, but 6 must be excluded. And 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, so 6 is a perfect number. So for 9, 9 can be divided by 1, 3 and 9. The 9 is the number itself, must be excluded. So the divisor is 1 and 3. The sum of 1 and 3 is 4 and is not equal to 9. So 9 is not a perfect number. If conclusion is false, the conclusion is false, then the argument is weak and not cogent. If the conclusion is true, then the argument is strong. If the conclusion is true and all the premises are true, then the argument is strong and cogent. So, when doing this type of questions, we always check the conclusion first. If conclusion is false, the argument is weak and not cogent. If the conclusion is true, then the argument is strong. Then we check the premises. If all the premises are true, the argument is strong and cogent. If conclusion is true, but one of the premises is false, then the argument is strong but not cogent. Let's check the conclusion. All factors of tails are divisible by 3. The factor of 12 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. But 1, 2, and 4 cannot be divisible by 3. So the conclusion is false. When the conclusion is false, the argument is weak and not cogent. 